Greetings, welcome to patch of day number 20. Not going to get around to doing 21 um, this week, so I'm just sort of under the hammer to get some stuff done. Andreas suggested doing something with a, a subscriber named Andreas wanted to do something with a, a, um, a modular synthesizer, so I thought I'd do my best to try and make something like that. But mostly I'm going to do it based on the kind of Vizzy idea where you can, um, you know, reuse these objects, which I guess would be make perfect sense with a, uh, an LFO. So a new object I'm making here is a cycle, the old good old um, cosine or sine tone. That's a nice place to start with your um, LFO. I'm making an LFO. All right, so. I've got a cycle object, and I might have another. I might make a choice of two different um, oscillator types for the for the LFO. The other one might be a triangle um, with a 0 0.5 is the peak phase on that triangle. Um, the phaser is needed here. Phaser to drive the um, phase of that triangle because we're going to use a frequency input. We might as well start with one of those. So let's go with a. Uh, we'll go with a dial for the frequency. Um, I guess that'll work for an LFO because we're interested only in, in um, low frequencies. I guess we'll use comments here because we are going to use this um, as a B patcher so we won't see all of this stuff. We won't see the connections. Hopefully we won't see them. Um, every time I make a connection here, I'll select a patch cord. I can hit command K, or that would be Control K, on a on a PC, and you can see that when we lock the patcher, the patch cords disappear. It's kind of similar to using presentation mode, but in I I don't use presentation mode, so we'll call it LFO just so we can remind ourselves what what it is that this thing is, um, and I'm going to have some kind of selector to choose between these. Well, I'm just going to use a selector tilde to choose between these selected two so I can choose between the cycle object and the triangle object and I'll use a U menu which I can maybe find in my um, palette but as the palette keeps growing I tend to lose track of where things are so I'm going to make a U menu this way and open up the inspector, so command I or control I if you're PCing it. Um, and I'm going to put some menu items here. I'm going to say sign or try. That's our choice. Okay. So now our new menu will say sign and try. And this will be the number of that item chosen. So plus one on that. We'll control this selector here to determine which one of those. Again, I create that patch cord, then I hit Command-K so that when I'm locked, it's hidden. All right, very good. We're going to want to keep everything below a central area up here because that's where our um, that's where our B patcher is going to be focused on. And we can type the word shape up here, I guess, because that's pretty much the shape, the wave shape for the LFO. Um, and then I suppose we need some stuff here. I'll just drag, I'll just alt drag that to copy that over. We'll call this width. We're going to do something with width. A couple of float boxes. So F for float. We can call, again, dra dragging that down. We can call that one low. <coughs> and I guess take those two things, copy them, and call this high. So this is going to determine the low and high values in the um, LFO, what the LFO puts out. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is just to, because both the cycle and the triangle um, range between negative one and one, um, I'm going to just add one and <clears throat> just to make my whole maths world here easier, multiply that by multiply tilde by 0 0.5. <clears throat> so we're dealing with um, signals in the range of 0 to 1. So <clears throat> the height of this thing, uh, um, yes, is going to be 
some multiplication involved. So again, I can just alt drag that <coughs> over here. And we're going to use the high value. Actually, what we're going to want to do is to make a new object here where we can um, subtract the with a with a floating point argument, subtract the low from the high to get the to get the range. So we'll use a trigger bang f so that any time <coughs> whether I change the low or the high it performs this subtraction. So that's the high minus the low. And I don't think I've command K those, so I'll do that. Command K, Command K. And yeah, we're going to multiply to get the, the this will be the range, which is the high minus the low, and then we'll just add, <coughs> so we'll change this to a plus tilde. We can just add the low, and that should be gravy. So that should be now an oscillated coming out here in range 0 to, well, whatever we choose here. Um, as the range. So we're going to put an outlet here. I'll, I'll click up here so you can see what I'm doing. Choosing an outlet and that's going to be our LFO. It's a pretty bad LFO but you know what can you do? It was it was, it was quick, right? So that's oh, the other thing I suppose on most of these sorts of things since we aren't going to see anything when we load this we might want to load mess one so that when we first load the patch at least what's showing in here, the sign will be what is actually coming out through that selector. All right, so I'm going to call save this thing. And where I'm going to save it is actually kind of important now because you'll see when you, assuming you have uh, 5.1.6 or later uh, in Max, that is, you'll see this whole new Visi environment. Um, which has its patches in one place and then it has the clippings in another. We'd want to do something similar here and create an op an, a, a patches folder and then we're going to put clippings in a different folder as well. So I'm going to, just to get to there, don't know if you can do that on PC, but I'm going to save it over here in the patches, that's Max5 applications, Max5 patches, make a new folder and I'll call it modular. That's, we're just putting them in here um, uh, so that so that when so that Max can not Max can see them without having them in the in the folder that you're working in so that anytime you use them Max can find them. So we'll call this LFO patch. Very good. Okay, so uh, I suppose we'll make something else a VCO. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to have an have a um, modular synthesizer that's only an LFO. So let's take, let's make ourselves a VCO now. So we're going to have, um, there's going to be some inlets to this thing. So I guess we could label those inlets in here. Frequency N. Um, yeah. And we can can this, oh, let's, let's just keep that for now. Might disconnect it from where it is. And in, in my oscill in my uh, VCO, I guess I'll give people an option of choosing a rect. So that's rect tilde. They can also have themselves a, a rect tilde for the um, oscillator. So we might want to do that in here as well on the inspector. Um, we can that's command I to bring up the inspector or control I. We'll add another one in here. We'll call that uh, rect. So you can have a rectangle wave. Good. Okay. So yes, now we can choose rect, and we can. <clears throat> um, don't think we need low and high anymore. Um, now we're going to call uh, this. We can make this a frequency slider, I guess. Uh, we probably want to do. Um, well, I'm going to put this into the signal world, so we'll do N to F. Uh, Yes, sure. So you can't do that. All right, so we'll do um, M to F without the without the signal, and then we'll put it through a SIG. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to have an inlet. I might as well create that right now. Um, an inlet where the um, 
these oscillator frequencies can be controlled by the um, by the. I'm just going to get rid of a whole bunch of this. We'll need a multiplier. We won't need the add because we don't want to. Just the negative one to one is fine for our oscillator. I might save this right about now just to make sure I don't accidentally hit <coughs> command command S to save it. We'll call this our VCO patch. Okay, again back in this new modular folder we saved in the patches folder in the max folder. All right, we've got our M2F, I can hit Command-K on that patch cord and then hook this up. Um, I guess we could change this <coughs> to VCO since that's what it is. And um, what else do we need on this thing? Uh, good question. We need to put a selector between what's coming in here, which will be our external frequency control. So I'm going to put a new object N um, selector. Okay. And again, we need two things going through the selector. And as well, actually, I could have just copied that one from there. As with that one, we're probably going to want to have it default to something. All right, I'm going to stick my sort of external control in there. And this will be, I uh, mean, my internal kind of frequency control. And this will be from the outside frequency. And these can just go straight into the in frequency inlets for these objects, the phaser, the cycle, and the rect. I'll drag this down and make it look a little more obvious what's going on. This selector needs to be a three now to get the rectangle rect in there. And what else? Um, I suppose we'll have another inlet up here for the amplitude. We might label that, um, even though It'll show up in the B patcher. Don't you worry about that. So there's our amplitude in, and I might do something just to make our lives less, um, our ears less destruct, destroyed. Some of you have complained already about my tutorials and how you can't hear anything anymore, which probably means you can't hear what I'm talking about right now. So there's our um, amplitude control. This can go out. Uh, there was something else I needed here, I think. Oh yeah, I was gonna. I need something to choose this selector, so I'll make a toggle for this. T on my keyboard, then another plus one new object plus one, so that we can basically toggle between the in the external and internal. I might label that toggle um, uh, internal slash external. Actually, it's the other way around. Okay, external slash internal. All right, and I can lock this to see how many of my patch cords are showing. This is going to be right in the middle of the way. So a lot of them. So command K on that one, command K, command K. That's already hidden. And we'll command K on this one. So it's just basically, oh yeah, we can probably just get command K on these inlets and outlets, inlets anyway. So that this is all we're going to see in the B patcher, but let's go on to that now. So there's our um, patches, and now what we want to do is to make a new patcher and create a B patcher. Which again, I could find that on the on the um, in the in the uh, palette, but I really don't have time to look at the palette the and. and um, Find, figure out what it looks like. So we have to choose a patcher file and we'll see if we go to where we are. Uh, okay, applications is what we're after here. And we're down in max. We're basically choosing those patches we just made. Um, modular. Okay, so there's my LFO. I'll open that. And good, we should have it there in front of us. We can resize this thing so that we're only getting the stuff that we want to see. And we can save this as this time. We're going to save it in the clippings. Maybe we'll make another folder in here called modular clippings and call it LFO. 
right, I'm hoping that no, nothing else is called LFO in that world. All right, so we can make another, well, we can just start with this one, I guess, again. We can just, uh, well, I guess I can just get the inspector up for this again and choose the other thing that we made, the VCO, open that up, and then we're going to want those to show. So you can see that there's our, these inlets looked kind of labeled, sort of, maybe. Um, and we'll save this as, this is the patch with the B patcher in it now. We can call that VCO in the modular clippings. Hopefully nothing's going to be a problem here. Um, let me just check whether, yeah. So as long as we named these things differently from the things we named in the clippings, because otherwise Max will get all stressed out about having multiple things named the same thing. All right, so that should be it. So now if we go to the, let's just close that. We can make, um, if we go to a new file browser, we can probably see if we look in here that we have our clippings. There's our LFO and then there's our VCO. That's because those were saved in the clippings folder. If we wanted to, we could take this, um, the, the actual patches for this thing and drag, the, which do we want? No, we want the clippings. Yes, we do. So we could drag the modular clippings in there. Um, we could drag this folder up here to make it really, I mean, if you wanted to <coughs> have easy access to these um, modular synth parts, then you could have that folder in your um, browser. Okay, so let's make a new patcher, see how this thing works. Um, now we can take our LFO, drag it into our new patcher. That's the way it looks. And the VCO, drag it in as well. Um, we'll see if this thing even works. That would be nice. I guess we'll need an, an easy DAC on the outside of this. Um, let's just try diddling around. This should be our, um, let's try internal frequency with a triangle wave. I think from when I remember playing with this, doing this a second ago, that you probably need the amp in. We can do something to make that not necessary, probably. <laughs> um, the other thing that's going to be, so the amplitudes are a bit high there, probably. I don't remember if I put anything to save on this. I don't know, let's just try hooking everything up. It's, I'm, not, I'm not confident that this thing's working quite yet. Um, oh yeah, we've got to turn on the, the, the something. Turn on the sound, yeah. All right, so why? Okay, um, let's try the internal. Oh, sure, okay. So I'm using two LFOs, one to drive the frequency if I have this set to external. Oh yeah, these would wanna have some kind of width, so 60 to 6,000 as well. Okay. All right, so the thing that you'd want to know after doing this um, would be how to save these as presets and I, you know, so that you can actually save a synthesizer patch if you like. Um, we'll look at that. I'm sure you'd probably want to have um, an envelope in your in your VCO. I'm sure there's a lot of things that you would want. Actually, and, and just an envelope um, patch would be good for the ampion on that. So that's that. Uh, I'm guessing I might have rushed through that, but hopefully it'll give you some idea of how that whole clippings thing works.